And welcome back to Jeff Koinange Live. Bob Collimore, Joshua Oigara. The awesome twosome dynamic duo, so dynamic, Manu Chandaria has stayed up to watch the show. Read the message. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, man. <laughs> he called me to tell me read his message. So Manu Chandaria says, "Ask both Bob and Josh: Is private sector making enough noise and creating a pressure in the present environment on the government that we are tired of this dialogue with very little effective action?" Josh. I mean, I, mean, I would say we will do more. So there is some work happening on private sector. Obviously, you know ourselves whether through Umbrella or association like the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. But there must be more people coming on the table today in terms of leaders to be able to do, to do something, to do action. You know, I said earlier, Jeff, that the future belongs to the doers. So what we have seen a lot is private sector talking. And you can talk as much as you want. Nothing changes. So if I look at the next phase like this year, you know, we've taken deliberate steps uh, as an organization to deal with the major challenges. One of them is youth unemployment. How do you get our younger people, a million of them, mm. Uh, you know, Jeff, you look at this year, almost one and a half million are finishing class eight and form four. And those are going to go into the job market. What are you creating opportunities for them? So I would say for Manu, I mean, we are here leaders of two larger businesses in our markets pushing that conversations. And we will try and build a bigger network through the industry that we actually operate today. So there is some work to do, I would say. Bob, do you agree? Um, let me take the, the, the question a bit broader. Um, I, I think private sector is big. Uh, first of all, no, the answer is no. Private sector is not taking the position they should be taking. Private sector are the creators of jobs, they, they pay taxes more than anybody else, all that stuff. And they don't behave like they do. You know, they're timid, they're scared of politicians, they're scared of being held in front of parliament, they're scared of the media, they just have to be courageous. So actually there's a thing called the, the B team that, that, um, that I belong to. Uh, and it was started by um, Richard uh, Branson and uh, Jochen Zeitz. And so it's, it's now a, a, a collection of, well, we would describe as being kind of courageous, uh, courageous leaders with strong moral values. Uh, but we now created a, a B team for Africa, of whom Joshua is a founding member, uh, and we've got some others. So Rita Kavashi, mm -hmm. uh, Jesse Moore from MCOPA. Um, uh, we've also got uh, uh, Amy uh, Jedemisi from uh, uh, Nigeria. We have Bethlehem in uh, Ethiopia. So these are leaders who are going to stand for something and they're going to stand for how we change the way that business is conducted um, with societal good in mind. You don't just make, you don't just run a business for profit. I mean, you ask the question of me, what was my half year profit? And, and I didn't know and I checked with Washiro who's here and he didn't know either because we don't actually fixate on the profit. We fixate on the purpose, and our purpose is about what we do in society, which is transform society. So finding a, a collection of like-minded people, and it's not an accident that Joshua and I happen to be very good friends. Um, Jesse Moore and us are, are good friends. Rita Kavashi, these are people who are prepared to stand up and, and speak you know, truth to power. So the things that, one of the things that uh, KCB have signed up to is the responsible tax practice. We are the two largest taxpayers in the country. Yeah. Uh, and we believe that it is our duty to pay tax. We, we're kind of very proud of that, uh, of that accolade. Um, we believe that we need to do much more about greater transparency. We believe that, um, you know, shell companies should be a thing of the past. We believe that we should see um, more transparency around financial flows. And this is something which, you know, the banking industry kind of struggles with. And so, Manu, I would say that, you know, th there are some leaders who are beginning to take a position on these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, a, you know, the umbrella organizations, uh, they tend to get lost and they get to the lowest common denominator. But there's some courageous people. I mean, Mo Ibrahim is part of the Africa uh, B team. So, you know, and Mo is very outspoken. Oh, extremely, on, on extremely, staff. yeah. Um, and so th this small collection of, of people, I think, will, will grow and we will persuade more people to join us. Is that legal there to speak up? Uh, not yet. No. Okay. Uh, Vincent Mothe is saying, uh, can you two run Kenya like a company? Bring it back to productivity and profitability? Oh, and pay the citizens a dividend. So here's the interesting thing. Um, you know, you see many people who believe that because they can run a company, they can run a country. Yeah. These are two very different things. Mm. Uh, I, I could never run a country. I could never work in government because it takes a different mindset. And, and you know, we often say to friends who are politicians, you know, we like you as a person, 
but as a politician, we really don't like you <laughs> because we don't understand you. Uh, and so I think that just because we are good at doing right. one thing right. doesn't mean we can translate. Yeah, and I would together. say, Jeff, the solution is not always, it's not always taking someone from one point A and putting plug him in in point B and expect to get the same result. It doesn't. I, I think that's we need to find a way of building the strength of both teams. Yeah. Every single time we argue about is it me or somebody else, I, 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 f I think that the country must be able to move and say, can we both of us? You know, Bob talks about the end conversation. Yes. How do we bring both of us? Because we need both strengths. You must be firing from both pistons. If we build those tools of so government drives to do his work, businesses builds his businesses and we run, that's what creates, I would say, a much more enhanced economy and a country for the next generation. That is the real question we must say. And I also look back and I say, perhaps what is the greatest challenge for us in our, it's very historic. We have a lot of knowledge for our younger people, whether it's technical skills, whether it's education, whether it's skills and capacity. We don't have the opportunity for them to apply it in the marketplace. So can we do the midwife? Yeah. And I think history will judge us very harshly today as leaders if we don't allow the next generation to transform and create that opportunity. I remember that when I was a young person when I finished my school. I had a lot of things to do, or opportunities to do. Not every single young person is ready to create a job the first day they graduate. Yeah. But can you plug them in something else to grow yeah. their business? Josh, I'm glad you said that. This segue is... Before you do that, yeah. you say history will judge us. I yeah. don't think history will judge us. Correct. I think the present is judging us. If Correct. you look at the protests we're seeing in Europe today with young people yeah. saying, you're not doing enough about climate yeah. change, yeah. And, and we're not. You know, if you look at, uh, at Kenyan business, what, what are we doing? I mean, as a collective, Very little. not enough. And so, you know, our children are standing up to us, you know, and his, his daughter actually, <laughs> she, she, stands, she holds us to account. She holds me to account. She holds him to account. And she asks some tough questions. And she's now 13, right? 13, yes, absolutely. She, and so, People are judging us and they're saying, you have not done enough hmm. as, as a generation. Yeah. That's true. I mean, she was asking me when there was, remember the, the COM21, yes. right, when you're speaking about the climate change. Yeah, yeah. She was like, what exactly are you doing, Joshua? Are you part of the green generation or are you part of the black generation? You know, are you going to take away all our forests? Are you going to be able to take away the rivers? When you grew up, you have nothing to inherit from the planet. What are you doing? And I had to give some kind of feedback. And I said, this is the actions we're taking. Yes. So I think a lot of these younger people are already in that conversation. Uh -huh. The leadership must take that challenge head on. Maina Kagani. Is he still in Kenya? Maina. <laughs> <laughs> He says, only one statement. He says, these gentlemen are the true modern day superheroes. If you can please confirm to the youth who are watching right now that you were once broke at some point in your youth. <laughs> he can't confess that. He's a bank manager. You know, how would you put your money in this bank if he can't confess that? Not for sure. Okay. I mean, he struggled. Go on, Bob. Uh, for sure. I, I think we both came from humble backgrounds. Mm. You know, um, his, farm, his father was a farmer. Um, I came from... Um, a single parent. I mean, you know, you know the story, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I remember, you, know, you think about Feliza, I was chatting to someone the other about Feliza, and I was, when I was young, uh, you, you, build, you have the overdraft, and then your salary comes, and you're still Correct. in overdraft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because banks were pretty irresponsible in those days. So, yeah, of course we were broke. I'm still broke sometimes. Josh. And, and I would say, yes. absolutely, and I must thank Mina for that question. Yes. So the challenge we have today, mm -hmm. is that we believe that suddenly we we can build our, ourselves through what I call osmosis. You start from nowhere and you get somewhere without putting in the effort. Yeah. I mean, naturally, if I speak to a younger person today, if I look at when I started my job 20 years ago, I mean, I started with nothing. I never really had anything in my pocket, actually, when I started in terms of my investments. And today, I haven't seen anywhere in the world where you can start and build, let's say, even a million shillings without putting in the effort. You're going to go to Okolima Market and see what our business people do. Mm -hmm. You're going to go into Gekomba, go into Mombasa and Kongoya Market and see Kondele and Kisumu. Yeah. This is the real day of every Kenyan struggles. If we build strongly over it, you start building a platform, getting a network and getting into business. What we, and, and I see a lot of young people doing that. What we miss is we see one person either who is what I call a tenderpreneur, who has just made some money suddenly from a deal. We can build our lives today as young people on deals. I think it's absolutely dangerous for us to put that profile. But Joshua, be, be careful that we don't, um, we don't judge those young people because they're only doing what they saw mm. my generation do. Mm. The, the, you know, you, 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 you got a friend, you know, you pay some money, you get a tender, you get a contract. You do. Um, so it's, it's they, you know, they're doing what 
the older generation, generation did. I saw on, on Twitter somebody said, ask them what's the secret to success. Uh, well, actually, they don't need to ask us what the secret to success is. Everybody knows what the secret to success is. They just don't like the answer. <laughs> I remember when I, I met Uncle Moody, uh, Moody Awari for the uh, very first time, and you know, he looks so sprightly. And I said, Uncle Moody, how do you, why do you look so young? Uh, he says, uh, every morning I wake up, I do, I don't know how many lengths in the swimming pool, I walk for how many kilometers. I said, oh darn, I thought you were going to tell me there's some kind of fancy drink that you drink. <laughs> there's, there's no shortcut. shortcut. You have to work hard. Yeah. Of course, that on its own is not enough. You have to have an environment. And if you have an environment where somebody wakes up in the morning at four o'clock, they wash with cold water, they then go to outering and you know, they panel beat a piece of metal all day so they can take on 300 bob. And you know, government doesn't provide any services for them because people like you and I don't pay our taxes. Actually, I do pay my taxes, just to be clear. I'm just, that's by way of example. Who do my number? Um, I have a who do my number. Um, <laughs> but you know, if, if the, the people who are in privilege yeah. are stealing and are not yeah. paying their, uh, you know, their dues to society, then of course, this poor guy, a poor woman who's waking up at the crack of dawn, working hard. And I, you know, when I think about Kenyans, I don't think about people like you and Joshua. I think about those people who walk to work at four o'clock in the morning. They are resilient. And there's no, the opportunities are simply not there. And this is why, uh, you know, our companies are doing a lot to try to create those opportunities. And I'm them. going to get to Giajiri and to Giajiri and all that. You can't pronounce it either. I'm really <laughs> glad you can't. <laughs> Thank you right? so much for that. I'll thing. get to that in a moment. But first, let's cross over to China, since that's where the president is right now, right? And uh, he's gone, uh, along with uh, former prime minister to seek 368 billion shillings for phase two of SGR. Phase one costs 400 billion and change, which means by the time this phase two is complete, it's 845 billion, close to a trillion shilling. Josh, are we taking on too much? You're the banker here. Are we taking on too much in loans? I mean, I would say, and it's, it's, it's a tough question to say, <laughs> yeah, you know, but, but I will give you an answer from an analogy on what we use in the bank today. I mean, for us to build, and two things I would say that we're an agricultural country today, if there's anything we're going to invest in, is infrastructure. No doubt about it. Many countries, if you look at North America and Europe, infrastructure was much more about rail yeah. to get products to market. Yeah. There's no other, or you do something on the seaways or on the oceans ways. And, and the many times the question asked actually is how much we've invested. Mm. Very little is put on the table about the values, the benefits, what's going to happen. The, and without infrastructure, I don't think we'll never build an economy. I look at Thika Highway. Mm. If you remember Thika Highway a few years ago, look at it today. I look at Mombasa Road. Yeah. And, and this is one way. And so there's a lot of questions, and, and I always just like to look at both sides. The Chinese call it the yin and the yang. You're going to look at it not just on one side and say it's quite costly. It's very expensive for us to buy a national bank. They say you're offering a very high price. But you're going to look at what is the benefit mm. that our purchase of this bank is going to create to create what I call the trillion shilling balance sheet institution in the fast in our markets. So there is value for both. I think that's what has never been explained, Jeff, correctly. But I will tell you that if you ask me any day, without the roads, without the railways, without the ports, I don't think we'll ever compete with the hinterland for Africa. It's a good point. It's a good point. How are you going to move stuff out of the country? How is America built? Right? Earlier on, you were talking about scaling up. Correct. We're producing a million graduates a year. People coming out of institutions a year. Not enough jobs, Bob. What do you think that's going to lead to? If you have a million people coming into the jobless markets every year, yeah. and you're creating, I think our latest estimates is about 100,000 jobs. Correct. There's 900,000 people that don't have jobs. And even the 100,000 jobs, you know, you cannot consider it to be a job if it's in the informal sector. Yeah. It has to be a job with dignity. Um, so, you know, if, if we don't create it, you create a problem. We already have a problem with young people who don't have things to do with their time. I mean, you, you know, I mean, they're not even on Twitter because they can't afford a smartphone. They can't afford the, 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 the data bundles and stuff like that. Um, so if we, uh, if we ignore the problem, society will start to fail. And there's been no society which has failed with, with thriving businesses. You look at Somalia, you look at Syria, you look at you know, all these countries. If society is failing, businesses cannot succeed. And therefore, it is in our interest to ensure that we do something about that. You know, in his 
was dat? To Jajiri. Go on, go on. To Jajiri. You look at his his thing. You look at the work we're doing with Digifarm. Mm. You look at the stuff we're doing with youth on youth uh, empowerment, training youth, working in partnership with people like uh, McKinsey, um, developing skills. Uh, you know, it's j just through the Safaricom, the Safaricom infrastructure, uh, we are supporting about 900,000 jobs in the country. Um, but th that's, th that's only like one year's worth of supply, yeah. right? Yeah. So even if I double the size of the company, We'll only create another, and I have to double the size of the company every year. And so we all have to step up to make this thing, make this thing work. And we all have to look at those young people and think, we had better solve your problem because it will give us a huge problem. You know, we're going to have higher and higher gates. Gates do not keep people out. No, no. N and neither do walls, as a famous president will find out soon. Yeah. May, I mean, I would say, sure. Jeff, that yeah. you know, we, we run a program called Tujajiri which is you know, creating a job or creating a business. It's an enterprise-based program mm. that helps younger people. And, and the ch our bigger challenge today has been that we've always believed that you must finish college or high school and get into a degree. Right. And many times we transformed all our technical schools into universities. And it doesn't work like that. Where are the many jobs? I'm going to be in the garage. I'm going to be repairing your car. Right, that's one job. I'm going to be in the car wash. I'm going to be able to do some work, plant some vegetables, learn some smart farming. I'm going to be able to do some domestic work. I'm going to be able to do some painting work, electrical works. So why are all our jobs being done in projects of construction going to China? I mean, I can't get someone to fix my door, to a plumber to fix my water, yeah. electrician. And so this program talks about how do we create a craft for our younger people. And there are many of them. So we targeted people who didn't go to university uh, out of Form 4 and said, come into technical schools. We have 200 schools and we train them. So we spend six months going into a school and they get a certified certificate from the, you know, in this case we use NITA for instance. And then from there we then finance them for one year to build a craft, build a business. So you're gonna give them some individuals who can help them, give them a marketer to help them to build their business, give them a lawyer to register them because you need to do that, give them a finance guy to money their taxes, we want you to be a taxpayer in our country. When you get that done, then we finance you for one year and we give you a loan for one year at a rate of 5%. Hmm. And then after one year you build, we then plug you in into a larger customer. So if you're in agribusinesses, we plug you into our agri customers. So you can build on that value chain. And at the end, you then can be mature enough to be lent from the bank. So we're building a platform. We're saying 300,000 of them. Wow. Each, each of them creates 10 jobs. That's 3 million. I, I'm actually so envious. 10 million jobs. So envious of this. Because, and this is a story which is not told. Yes. I, you know, I, I was with Josh when he launched it uh, a few years ago. Um, it's such an amazing story. And as, as we said on, on Monday when we were chatting, that these are the stories which are not told. People look at KCB and you know, when you describe Joshua, you describe him as being, you know, leading the biggest bank. It's not about leading the biggest bank. Yeah. It's about having the biggest impact. And this is one program which I envy a lot because this is a lot. I mean, you know, we're doing a little bit of stuff with, with young people and I think, um, you know, we do a little revolving Absolutely. loan thing. Absolutely. Um, which we lent about 50 million shillings out and it just revolves and it, it touched about 6,000 young people. Oh. This is hundreds of thousands of young people. Times and 10. the knock-on effect. Right. Knock on effect. You know, so I, I mean, there's one young man that I saw Correct. who they, they trained to, um, to fix cars. Correct. Eventually, Correct. he opened his garage. Mm. Eventually, he started to employ mm. people in the garage. You know, I asked him, he said I was a spanner boy, right? Yeah. yeah. He's based yeah. out here in Kitengela. Yeah. Uh, I, after, after one year, he's employed 20 people. So now he's no longer just kind of doing a car wash, he's doing a formal garage, oh. he's selling spare parts, he's oh. employed much more people. He said, today, I'm a director of a company. Oh. Yeah. This is Spina Boy, right? Spina Boy. Oh. And this is what we can transform. If you go to Groen, Groen yeah. right, where yeah. you see a lot of, look at other markets like Europe, or, or even in North America. Yeah. Your car service, how many cars do you have on the road? Jeff? Every year we register, every month, 10,000. Correct. Where do we fix them? Where do we, get, where do we get them really sorted out? How do you build the skill? And we have other partnerships, so we don't work alone. So we work with Safaricom, we're working with Toyota. New cars are very digitized, they're very automated. If you don't use the old skills, yeah. you will never build on it. So what we want to do in this program, Jeff, is to create three million jobs. You know, we will be the, and we can get more private sector. Now, interestingly, a lot of global players are very excited about our project. Yeah, you know, whether it's GIC, for instance, whether yeah. it's a MasterCard Foundation, yeah. for instance. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing more partnership with government. We can address this gap, I can assure you, we can create, the challenge for us is to create 10 million jobs in the next five years. And some of the, some of the private sector who, are, because it's, it's not, I mean, it's not just us, it's just the, we're the two here today, but mm -hmm. you know, there are other private sector players. I mean, you know, his competitors, Equity Bank, for example, mm -hmm. uh, are also in that space. Fly. 
But we are very wary of getting involved with, this, with, with government. So, you know, we want government to create the enabling environment, mm -hmm. but we don't actually want them to get involved in, in playing with this. Because one, because they're actually pretty slow. Um, they can also be pretty corrupt. Uh, they're very bureaucratic. So we're saying just create the right environment and we can do the rest. And as I said, you know, there's a few banks. NIC is, uh, is another bank that's uh, you know, been very responsible in doing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, KCB, Equity Banks, Varicom. Mm -hmm. So more of us are coming to the table. What are you doing at your academy, the MPES Academy? Best Academy, is, and we're so proud of this thing. So yeah. we're, um, we've put aside about uh, 10 million shillings um, to fund this academy. Uh, we have taken, so far we've got about 700 children in the school. It's a fully, a fully paid for boarding school for bright children um, from very underprivileged backgrounds. Very, secondary very school. under secondary, secondary All the way. school. Yeah. Very, very underprivileged. So we, we actually means test them. And we will grow to about 900 children overall. So we, we take 200 children a year, uh, four from each county two boys and two girls, and we're very adamant about that. So it's 50 50. Uh, we also have children with disabilities, so we have, uh, I don't know what the percentage is, uh, but you know, this is where my friend came in when he stepped in, he says, that, you know, I'll take, I'll, I'll sponsor 100 of these children. Hmm. So 100 children with disability, which actually give us a bit of a challenge because the school wasn't designed to cope with that many children with disability. Right. But, you know, we said, okay, fine, okay, we have to, we have to fix it. Um, uh, about 10 billion shillings is uh, being pumped into this, so it's all fully funded. Um, and what we're trying to do, what we set out to do is not just to educate children, but to create leaders. We said, what's the problem that we have in Kenya? An absence of leadership. So how do we create the leaders of tomorrow? And we said, you know, let's just find friends, let's find partners. And I see again, you right. come back to them, and you know, they sponsor uh, children with albinism in the school. And uh, these are great, these are great kids, you know, they're bright, they're courageous when you listen to them. When the president came to open the school, you know, he kept everybody waiting. I mean, I was in hospital in London, but I was watching it on, uh, on YouTube. Um, he kept everyone waiting because these children captivated him so much as they showed him demonstration, they showed him the entrepreneurial stuff they're doing. These kids are, are baking bread and selling it, they're doing laundry, um, they're making shampoo. Uh, they're bottling water and selling it. They've got rabbits, they've got chicken. So they're learning how to run businesses, how to be entrepreneurs, as well as how to be fantastic sports people, as well as how to be artists and musicians uh, academically. Um, so, you know, how do you create leaders? You have to invest in leaders. Don't just hope. It doesn't happen that way. And I would say, Jeff, that we need a lot of work for you know, Safaricom and KCB, you know, we, we, we show the differences, the dynamism. We're a very old company, yeah. you know, over 100 years old. You know, Safaricom is a young company. But yet we have a common goal and we're able to meet at the center or the nexus where change really happens. Mm. So more and more, we give ourselves reasons. I think what I would say, Jeff, is that we give ourselves reasons why we cannot do. And we're still the two largest companies today in our market, yeah. yet we're involved very actively in terms of making changes, impacting the lives of ordinary people, and making transformations. When you do that as a daily activity in our DNA of our organizations, whether it's about sustainability or sustainable development goals, you actually drive your business forward. Like Bob was saying, it's not about that bottom line, Correct. right? It's Correct. beyond that. Exactly. And you're not rivals. You're not, you Correct. Know, Correct. You're not Correct. chewing Correct. up that part. In our market, Jeff, it's a smaller market for us to try and kill each other. We're going to build opportunity today for the next generation. That's the future today. This is the history we're going to make today. We, we, work in this, we, we work in this thing called the, the three Ps. And the first P, and it's in this order, is purpose. As a company, we're a purpose-driven company. That comes before anything else. Then comes our people, because without our people, you can't fulfill the purpose. And if you do those two things, you get the profit. Now people say, so you don't care about profit? Actually, the board will fire me if the profit doesn't come through. <laughs> you know, there's no, yeah. the, you know, there's yeah. no PIP. I'm going to give no. you a warning. No. They will just look at the numbers and they say, okay, so we're done. Um, but if you start, if you start with purpose, even in your personal life, you start with purpose, you're going to go very far. If you don't have purpose, and uh, you know, I was speaking with um, Emmanuel Jal, uh, the child soldier, mm -hmm. over the weekend, mm -hmm. and he says, I, which I hadn't really thought about. When you get the intersection of vision and purpose right. is when you've got to that sweet spot. Correct. Because you can have a purpose. You, know, you can have a purpose to, to you know, uh, what's the word? It's um, jackpotting. Correct. Jackpotting, yeah. Jackpotting. Yeah. Jackpotting. Yeah. <laughs> ATMs, you know, yeah. that's your purpose. Uh, but if you have a, a purpose with values, yeah. and if you have a vision, 
then, and when we look at those people who've really done stuff, you know, Mother Teresa, Manu Changaria. Uh, Manu, I hope you're still awake. <laughs> but, you know, what, what Manu has is the intersection of vision and purpose. Yeah. Companies need to have the same thing. Purpose, people, profit. Yeah. An intersection of purpose and vision. Vision, correct. It's vision. deep. This isn't even an interview anymore, you know that. This is a conversation. We could be in a bar, no, no, a, a coffee house somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> don't say bar, but my doctor might be. <laughs> I, I don't drink. I really don't. I, I'm in coffee house. <laughs> Great conversation. We're going to take another quick break. By the way, if you're interested, Manchester City, Man U, still 0 0, first half. You know, apart from Chapadim, but I have no interest in football. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you care? No, 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 I don't know who is who. Yeah. Uh, should we take a break, Monica? You think we should take a break, bud? Monica? <laughs> Monica! <laughs> <laughs> Another quick break. Come back, folks, and uh, we'll get your tweets. We'll read your tweets and SMSs with these two amazing guys. This is no longer an interview. This is a conversation. A conversation we should be having over and over again. Even, Monica, guess what? Latifa. She's saying, away from politics. This is cool stuff. You can only find it right here on JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.